Hello everyone, how's it going? Good evening. Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Ancient Domains of Mystery, or Adam, as it were. Kuro, good evening, my friend. Sorry, everyone, at the beginning we had a little bit of technical difficulties. It was not working for some strange reason, so I had to restart the stream, and here we are. Yes, good evening, Kuro. I hope you're doing better today, my friend. Hope there's no water in your story. Victory. Hello, my friend. Good evening. All right, so this is a new game to me. I have heard of this game for a long time. Uh, it was given to me uh, as a birthday present by a, a friend of mine, and I'd always meant to play it. It's It's considered one of the kind of classic roguelikes, and I like to pride myself on having experienced the roguelike games, uh, and I, I still have work to do to get there. Uh, I still need to play um, NetHack, for example, more than I have. I've only played for like 20 minutes, and then um, I need to play Rogue, I mean, if I'm playing roguelikes, I should probably have played Rogue uh, more. Uh, but I play a lot of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, as you guys know. I've been playing Tales of Magile, Caves of Cud. Uh, and, the, you know, Caves is more of a, a modern roguelike of the throwback. But this is definitely one I've always meant to get my, my hands on and try. So here we are. And uh, I don't know anything about the game. And so we're just going to dive in and, and make a new game. Um, hey, the dev, what is up, my friend? It's one of your faves. That is awesome. Good evening. How you doing? All right. So it says here, welcome to the entrance of ancient domains of mystery. You are but one step away from embarking upon a wonderful, terrifying, and exciting journey into dark dungeons mysterious caves and dozens of other strange places so that sounds fun and i'm down to do that so let's start a new game now there's options here to do a tutorial which is great you know this is an older game and i don't know much about the history of how this game has evolved but it looks like you know it had an ascii origin and then at some point they put tiles and eventually this whole ui and more, you know, front-loaded graphical effect on top of the existing game and baked in a tutorial. And this happened also, you know, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup started working in features over its many uh, years of life, and this game appears to have done the same thing. Uh, so we can start the game in tutorial mode. Several hints will help you learn the game and its key commands. Use this mode if you've never played Adam before or if you're still a beginner. Uh, your game score is reduced in this mode, and you can't unlock achievements. Okay, I could also do standard mode is a great way to learn if you're new, and you can start playing. Talents will be chosen for you, hunger is not deadly, and some internal die rolls will be slightly fudged in your favor. You will enter a separate high score and can't unlock achievements. And then hard is like the traditional roguelike mode. Uh, you select a star sign, gender, race, profession, and talents... And it's for experienced and competitive players who have learned to cope with the basic game and are not afraid to die often and in surprising ways. Adam, as it was meant to be played, difficult and deadly. So I gotta say, I'm sure that this is not advised, okay? But I'm gonna start with the roguelike mode. I'm just gonna jump in to the, to the deep end. And then if I don't understand how to do things... Uh, I might do tutorial just to get some tips, but I think with the amount of experience I have playing roguelikes, hopefully most of it's pretty intuitive, so let's find out. All right, so choose a star sign or mode, and so um, let's see what this means. I could be a raven, which means um, I have these key signs, death, messengers, companion, tricks. Uh, harder to trick by deceptions. Messengers will reach you faster. You are faster. Companions are more powerful. Plus two to initial perception. Okay. Uh, book means knowledge, learning, and laws. 
lawful tendencies, one free skill per level, increased chance to learn spells, plus three initial learning. Now, fate... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to actually do this. This is also ill-advised. You should never do this unless you're uh, just looking to be silly. I'm going to go fate, which is just randomly give me something. I could take something that's like combat oriented and just pick a melee class to have a more easy to understand kind of experience but um, what's what's the fun in that hey, hey fading good evening so this is on your steam wish list but you've never played it yeah it's been on my wish list forever too and I got it as a gift and so I'm giving it a try I, I guess it, yeah, Your but your wish list is 10,000 titles long. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go random. I know, Victory. I'm just going to see what happens. Fate. Um, and we're going to go Fate and choose a race or mode. What did we get? Does it tell you what I've gotten? So I don't even know, like, what I've rolled so far. Oh, let's just do it. Fate. And profession or mode. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to just trick me. Fate. All right. I'm going to do something fun. And uh, choose ap attributes by fate, which would be random, or points. I'm gonna, This I will do on my own, okay? Um, but normally I would... And probably in subsequent runs, after I've died, which will be immediate, uh, I'll switch. But for now, I'm going to just go fate for everything just to dive in. And then I'm going to pick uh, my my skills based on points, seeing what I got. So, um, oh, but never mind. They don't tell me. Oh, is this what? Um, this is what I am. I'm an adult male orcish paladin candleborn. Is that what I am? Okay, well, I, it seems like I turned out okay. Um, an orcish paladin who's candleborn. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> Alex, hello, good evening. Yeah, most of the Steam library is in your, um, your wish list fading. That makes sense. I agree with that sentiment. I like doing that too. But um, I think you also probably own thousands of games. Um Saint, your your seems your uh, your Steam score is incredible. All right, um, let's see. So I have thirty two available points. Feeple, Leonard, hello everybody. Good evening, Feeple. This is called Ancient Domains of Mystery. It's roguelike Monday, Feeple, and so this is a classic roguelike, classic, you know. RPG, single-player, permadeath-style game. So let's see what we got. Um, if I am indeed... Oh, this is a good one, Leonard? Fantastic. I I was hoping to have at least a few people here who have played this. Uh, so the dev is here, and Leonard is here. And, um... Hey, hey! Archangel, good evening. So there's going to be some people to answer some questions, which is great. Hey, that's great, the dev. Um, Noit is a good one, too. Uh, but I've played it before. But it doesn't mean, people, I won't play it again. Noita is just me exploding because I catch on fire, or I fall into acid, or I blow myself up, and I don't even know what happened. Uh, that's Noita. But I do enjoy it. Now, um... So, Candle Orc Paladin isn't all that bad, says the dev. Let's do it then. Let's dive in. All right, so strength is, is critical, and it takes... Um, looks like it takes five points for me to raise this, though, because it's so high. Uh, so, I could boost some other stats instead. Hey, hey, Crawler Nick, good evening, my friend. 14 wins. Congratulations. Baller. Now, I love this... Right, just looking right off the bat, appearance is separated from charisma. In classic D&D, &D, like in 2nd edition D&D, &D, 
these two were always kind of conflated. Like your charisma was a direct reflection of how beautiful you were as well as how good you were with people. But now they've made it distinct. Like you can be great with people, but hideous. And it, you, you love to see that kind of distinction. Um, now I'm gonna go strength. I didn't even care that it's so expensive. Wait a minute, where's all my talents? I have three talents, but if I use attribute points, I I lose a talent? Absolutely, Leonard. I've played since second edition. So I don't know what's going on here. I have th It says three talents gained, but if I put points into um, attributes, then my talents go down. So does that mean on the on next screen, I'm going to... Yeah, that's right. Fading is my current DM for my amazing paladin. Uh, I'm trying to figure out maybe talents cost points and I get to use them later on. Let's see here. Um, so here's my breakdown. I have a strength of... 18 because I get two from GN or a one from GN plus from which is my gender I get plus two from my my class paladin and plus one from being an adult from my age hey hey Casimir good evening my friend how you doing So let's see how I figure this out. Uh, I mean, this is like my final stats right here. Oh, it tells you, it breaks it down here too. It says, strength describes your ability to inflict damage in combat, determines your carrying capacity, and influences your chance to hit opponents in melee combat. Initial hit points are also partially based on strength. So I know I'm taking my talents away. I'm doing great, Casimir. I've never played this, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of putting points into um, strength. And then let's see what else we got here. Willpower is hit points and magic points. Toughness is hit points. Let's just do that. Oop, can't do any more. So I'm really strong. I'm, like, outrageously strong in... I don't know. Learn some stuff. Can we learn anything? No. Um, no, we can't do any more. Okay. So I have three available points that I can't rightly spend, and I have two talents gained, whatever that means. So we're just going to click play. You are born in the month of the candle. Okay, so that means we get aspects hope, life, serenity, transition, game effects, heals faster, the gods are more forgiving when asked for favors, one free talent, to be a male orc. Interesting. Oh, Casimir, that's awesome. Thank you for explaining that. So uh, I was mentioning Caves of Cud earlier is just one of the other kind of uh, quintessential or I guess iconic or seminal roguelikes that I've been playing. And I really want to just try to play all of the really uh, iconic kind of marquee games that people would associate with must-play roguelikes, and this is one of them, and I'm so ex I'm excited to get into it. <laughs> it kind of, people. That's a good, that's a good analogy. Um, so, what's new to me about this game is it's generating a story and a narrative for me that I'm not used to from you know, dungeon crawl, and it's more akin to maybe Tales of Magi, but even this is more personalized. There's all these different aspects. That's completely new to me. Uh, trying to figure out what these things mean, you know, hope, life, serenity, transition. It's almost like a tarot deck kind of feel to it, um, or, an, you know, an astrological feel. Uh, and I have black hair, black eyes, and a tanned complexion. Very nice. Your father is a guildmaster. Good. Your family generally is rather wealthy and well-known in your hometown. Well, that's great. I, uh, I had a good upbringing. As a young child, you were often alone. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, you did not have any friends. Let me just kind of roll back the upbringing comment. 
Uh, you did not like to remember those times. They were very sad. All right, never mind. My childhood, I, I had some affluence, but my experience was bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Tantalus, that's hilarious, my friend. Exactly. You've got that right. Crawler Nick, I think you're dead on. Okay, people. In your youth, you worked a lot to become rich and famous later. Oh, God, that's just like my youth in my actual life, except I never became rich or famous. Consequently, you rarely had enough time to play with other kids of your age. As a young adult, you were a credit to your family. Your parents supported your plans and were very understanding. They tried to help you along your way with all means at their disposal. At the age of 16, you end your apprenticeship. You're now a fully learned paladin. So I'm 16, or maybe a little older. Oh, cool, Leonard. So there's a second part called Ultimate Adam. See, this is stuff that I didn't know at all. Um, but, you know, thank you for telling me that. I had no idea that there was even, you know, more games or more extensions to this. All right, let's do it. Let's play. Okay. Um, oh, here's my talent. So if I would have not adjusted my stats, I would have had three of these to pick from. But by doing my stats, I, I limited myself down to two. I didn't know the button, you know, when I was selecting options, it said play. It didn't say next. And so I kind of thought that meant I was diving right into the game. But no, I do get to choose some stuff. Uh, further. Okay, so let's see. Choose a talent. One of two. Um, I can be alert, which means plus two to perception, attribute, and max. I can be charming, which is what Tantalus was just talking about. Uh, I could be dexterous. Dexterity seems good. And uh, hardy also seems really good. Okay, we're going to go strong because I want to just have the most strength possible because it's funny and um, plus three hit points. And my name is uh, Dr. Incompetent. Oh, all right, Dr. Incom. All right, here we go. And we play. Okay, cool, the dev, thank you. Yeah, I like to see some of the options, okay. Your journey begins. Oh my god, look at that skull. See, this is where adventuring in games really separates the chaff from the wheat and also the me from the adventure. Um, if it was me in real life, okay, and I was on this side of this chasm, I would have trepidations even about crossing this bridge that has no railings. Okay, so that's disturbing enough, unless this is extremely wide. And then I certainly would have unbelievable pause of ever entering a cave that just had a giant skull carved into it, and you were walking into its, yes, as Fading is talking about, giant mouth. Hey, Captain Duck, good evening, my friend. It is a new game again, Captain Duck. I'm on a rampage. I'm trying out so many new things. Um, exactly, Casimir. There could be a troll under here. There could be goblins and orcs running out from these woods. And then God knows what is in this mountain. But um, in, in the digital world, I charge headlong into this. For 6,000 years, the world of... And Cardia was a serene world unmolested by the forces of chaos. That's a good run, 6,000 years. Oh my god, it got worse. Um, Fading, that's an interesting question. I think if you merely said the word goblin, um, I might run in. Yeah, exactly, Captain Duck. But now look at the skull. Now, um, fading to your question, it would take several more goblins, not just the mere mention of goblins, to get me into this cave with the glowing mouth. Like, once you put these kind of glowing veins along the entrance to the cave, it's, it's amped up a lot. 
Exactly, Casimir. Troll bridge into the Temple of Doom. I'm playing like an old school RPG module. I love it. Yeah, things escalated really quickly because now the sinister forces of evil and darkness have opened a gateway somewhere deep within the mountains of the Dracolor chain. Great. Oh my god, it got even worse. Terrors from unknown dimensions flood the world of Ancardia and wreak havoc, spreading corruption ever faster. I mean... Hey, hey, Sir Theodore! Hello, my friend. Good evening. There is chaos, Sir Theodore. Things are spiraling out of control. I'm terrified. But I'm a hero. Gosh darn it. We're gonna go into this glowing mountain and fight whatever terrors are flooding from unknown dimensions. I know, it is purple. Oh, it burned out. You can have him, Crawler. You can have him, Nick. Look at this, it's it's tamer. Okay, now we can go in. Now it's up to you to explore the Dracolor chain, meet its inhabitants, find the source of chaos, and defeat it. Or maybe even join forces with it to conquer the world. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, interesting, the dev. So chaos in this game does not necessarily equal evil. Thank you, the dev. That's a cool wrinkle as well. Oh, you know what, um, Leonard? I've seen Tangle Deep advertised, but I haven't played it. How's that game, by the way? Now, look at this. There's me at the edge of the bridge, and this is about right, because if I was, like, hiding, just imagine me hiding over here in these foothills in some shrubbery, and I saw the mountain light up, the skull glow, I'd probably, like, wait a bit before I went in. And this is about right. I wait until the glow completely subsides before entering. Now... The mountain does look different. There's glowing eyes, there's some teeth on the mouth, and it's been rounded, and there's a horn. But other than that, it, it looks... The sky also is a bit calmer. So this is about when I would enter. Oh, okay. Things have changed. Here we are. I'm getting some clipping here. Let me... One second, let me resize this. Okay, there we go. I'm playing in windowed mode, and now um, the window was not working properly on the previous screen, but now everything you should be able to see. Yes, the Super Nintendo retro vibes. For uh, Tangle Deep, I love Super Nintendo games, so that's uh, Super Nintendo RPGs especially. That's great. I think so, Th Sir Theodore. Let's toss a rock inside. Okay, so now when I look at this screen, what we see here is much more in keeping with uh, an old school roguelike that has been uh, retroactively given some quality of life and UI. So we have a text log at the bottom. We have my stats. Here's my hit points. Here's my power points. Uh, here's my level, defense, value, protection value. Uh, and then here's my stats modified. Here's the dungeon level. Here's my alignment. Interestingly, I start as chaotically aligned. That doesn't seem good. It does, Captain Duck, exactly. Like, once we get into it, it looks more like Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. In the bottom right, I have my mini-map, and then there's some options. I can save the game, I can see my character, I can search around. And what's cool about this UI is that when I hover the mouse over things, it gives you the key binding, and a lot of these keys are very familiar, like numpad 5, um, or just the number 5 is weight. You know, and so uh, let's see if I can move with WASD. I checked. No, that was search. I checked my surroundings. Okay. 
So I'm going to kind of maybe play with the mouse and clicking around. That seems like it makes sense. Okay, so uh, let's... Well, I can look, all right? Um, and when I look, I see a road, I see mountains. Here's an unassuming cave entry. Aren't all cave entries unassuming? All right, so here's me. Um, and let's check out my character screen. I, I'm kind of interested in this. Uh, no, I don't want to look anymore. How do I cancel that? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I push escape. Oh, that's how you get out of that. Okay, character information. Here we go. Ho oh, ho, look at this. Here's some old school screens for sure. Um, okay, there's encumbrance in this game. And, oh, look at this, d and I'm attacking 1 die 8 plus 6. I have a plus 6 bonus to hit. I'm a boss. Because of my strength, I'm an absolute boss. Chaos equals Calamity Doc. Yeah, there you go. I am full Calamity. Okay, so let's kind of move around. And let's see what we got. All right, I'm going to go in here. I don't care. And let's see. An unassuming cave entry. I don't know. Uh, can I go in? If I right-click, it gives me some more options. And we're going to descend the stairs. Oops. Okay, yeah. So let's just go down. All right, we're in. Yeah, I saw that, Leonard. So, like, when I booted the game up, it gives you different graphic graphical options. Like, these are... I'm playing with the tiles, which is how I like to play, because it gives you some kind of graphical presentation. But you could play OG ASCII if you want. All right, so... Uh, you enter a rather unremarkable cave complex. An easy wind is going, and you feel that... Or an easy wind, how about that, is going, and you feel that life is rife with new experiences to make. Okay. Um, interesting. All right. So life is rife. I like that rhyme. Okay, I'm going to walk around. God, I look great as an orc. There's bird sounds. So this, this game does have music and sound effects. Oh, my God. Every racing game is on sale on Steam, says Captain Duck. That is excellent. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to move over here. And, yeah, the narration is pretty funny. It, it is cool, Casimir. You're right. Not every game does narrate for you. And it gives you, like, more of a sense of purpose. I like it. All right. So there's, this guy is coming at me. And he's a goblin rock thrower. So this is hilarious. So this goblin rock thrower, everybody, is losing at being a goblin rock thrower because he's walking toward me. He should probably not be doing that. Now, what do I... Am I equipped with a spear here? Uh, can I see, like, my inventory? Use a skill. What do I have? Metallurgy? What? I have metallurgy. This skill is automatically used. When you discover metal ingots, it allows for automatic identification. Not always, but if it is of great importance to weaponsmiths, it can also be actively used to determine the type of metal an item is made from. The item needs to be identified for this. The higher your skill score is, the more detailed the results will be. If the skill score is greater than or equal to 80, Adam will internally always make two skill checks when one requested by circumstances and use the better result. If the score is equal to 100, Adam will make three skill checks whenever requested to do so and use the best result. Interesting. So, uh, there's a lot more in this game. Hey, hey, Phil. What is up, my friend? How's it going? There's a lot more in this game than I thought. And there's metallurgy, which means like I'm going to be gathering materials potentially from the environment and crafting gear so you know like captain duck was saying before this is different than dungeon crawl stone soup in in that sense dungeon crawl doesn't really have any gathering or crafting uh of that uh type so let's see all right so we've got this guy i can chat with him let's see if he wants to chat um you talk to the goblin rock thrower the goblin rock thrower screams in anger. The goblin rock thrower fails to hurt you. So he didn't want to talk. He just attacked me. 
Okay? So I have no weapon skills, so I'm just going to walk up into him. And indeed, I killed him in one shot. This is exactly like what Nick was talking about. Because of our strength, we absolutely wrecked that guy. You can also um, kick him.